Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznas here, and welcome to my 1 to 99 and 120 summoning guide for RuneScape 3. Now, first, we're going to start off with the basics, talking about exactly how summoning works. Well, summoning is a members only skill that allows you to summon familiars to help you in battle or to do other things. The skill is trained through creating and infusing pouches at obelisks. Pouches are made up of a few different things. Firstly, we have charms, which is the core to summoning, which come in the form of gold, green, crimson, and blue charms, which are received from monster drops, commonly gotten through Slayer. So next, to make summoning familiars, you'll need spirit shards, which are required ingredients for every summoning pouch. They can be bought at most summoning shops or on the Grand Exchange. You'll also need empty summoning pouches, which can be bought at summoning shops or on the Grand Exchange too. Finally, each summoning pouch requires a different tertiary ingredient, which can be a variety of different things, ranging from bones all the way to flowers. Now we're going to get into the useful items for training summoning. Now keep in mind you do not need all these items, they're just things that can help you increase your XP, make training easier, or save charms. First we have the Torstal Incense Sticks, which can be bought off the Grand Exchange and when used at max potency, you'll gain up to a 2% summoning XP increase, costing around 172k per hour to use. Next, we're going to be looking at the Shaman's Outfit, which is an experience boosting set acquired via Treasure Hunter. And with the full set, you'll receive a 6% XP boost while training summoning, which is very, very good. And if you get the add-on to the Shaman's Headdress, it will also grant you a 5% chance of saving a charm, which is absolutely amazing as well. So this is really worth using if you have it. It can also be obtained as a reward from the familiarization minigame, which we will talk about later. So next we're going to be looking at a very important item for training summoning, and that is spirit gems. Now spirit gems are pocket slot items that give a chance of saving a charm while creating summoning pouches. Now gems can be obtained from treasure hunter, and all monsters that drop one charm at a time have a chance of dropping spirit sapphires, emeralds, or rubies. Now these gems are super important to use for training summoning and they can save you a ton of charms. They can be combined into many gems to a maximum of a thousand charges. Now the spirit sapphire gives a 10% chance to save a charm scaling up all the way to a 60% chance to save a charm for the spirit onyx. Now if you have these you should be using them a lot and the best strategy is to use your best ones for blue charms charms since blue charms are the most valuable charm to save. You really wouldn't want to use any of these gems on something like gold or green charms as they're just not worth saving. Now another item is the summoning skill cape which is worth mentioning if you're going for anything above 99 summoning like level 120. Because the perk of this skill cape has a 2% chance to not consume a charm when infusing summoning pouches. This also stacks with spirit gems and the modified shaman's headdress. Next, we have the Inspire Awe Archaeology Relic, which is worth using if you're level 119 Archaeology as it grants players 2% more experience in the summoning skill while training. Next, a Summoning Focus is an item that can be made by combining items produced by using a Crafting Catalyst. Now, these are also obtainable from Corrupted Calphite Guardians, Marauders, Feline Ox, and Scarab Ox. Now, these Summoning Focuses give 20% extra summoning XP when making pouches at an obelisk. One focus is used for each pouch made, so these are good to use up with your high XP pouches if you have any summoning focuses in your bank. However, I do not think it's worth it to spend time grinding these just for summoning. Now, if you're someone who camps Corrupted Scorpion or Corrupted Creatures, I mean, anyway, then maybe this is a good byproduct to use. 
Now next we have the Charming Imp, which is an item that's useful for collecting charms to use for summoning. It costs 100k Dungeoneering tokens and it requires level 21 summoning and level 21 Dungeoneering. Now it will automatically pick up your charms for you, which is really nice or it can destroy certain charms and give you XP back. However, Crimson and Blue Charms should never be destroyed for XP as it is just not worth it whatsoever. Finally, we're going to talk about another item that's useful for collecting charms, and that is the Charming Potion. It is a potion created at level 102 Herbler or purchased on the Grand Exchange. And what it does is it increases the base number of charms dropped by a monster by 1 for 6 minutes per dose. This can help speed up the amount of charms you get while collecting them. Finally, we're going to talk about useful quests, as quests are a great way to both get quest points and get XP at the same time. The Wolf's Whistle is a great starter quest, which we'll cover in just a few moments, and quests like Salt in the Wound, The Void Stares Back, Fate of the Gods are all great quests that give you a big boost to your summoning XP. Alright, so before we start the leveling section, I just want to mention that summoning is a unique skill, as there is not a set training method in general, just because charms differ from person to person. You may have a ton of green charms, but not have any crimson left. You may have a ton of crimson, but no gold charms. Well, this guide is going to aim to allow you to go to a certain section based on your level and see exactly what you should be making for each section, no matter what charms you have. So, let's say your level Level 52 summoning, you'll go to that section of the guide and you should be able to see exactly what pouches are best to make for that level for all types of charms. There will also be a marker indicating the cheapest method for each leveling section and another marker indicating the fastest method for that leveling section so you can find the cheapest method if that's what you want or the fastest method or just see how to use up the charms you have. I I think this format is going to be really good to give you all the different options and let you choose yourself based on your own situation. However, in a lot of these leveling scenarios, Crimson and Blue Charms are going to be the fastest and that sometimes also makes them the cheapest. But I realize that you can't always have an unlimited supply of Crimson or Blue Charms and nobody plays the same way, which is why I'm going to include every single pouch and show you all the calculations so you can choose exactly what what's right for your situation. And lastly, before we get into the leveling, I also want to mention on when to use certain charms. Now, a good rule of thumb, if you care about being the most efficient while training summoning, is you can use charms in a certain order. So gold charms start giving less and less XP around level 60, and they become very expensive because of the low volume of the tertiary ingredients, which is why a lot of people tend to stop using them around level 60. As for green charms, the same things happen happen at around level 80 to 85 and crimson charms are always worth using and they're one of the core training methods for summoning and blue charms are the best charms for xp per hour and should be saved up until around level 60 to 70 at least now we're going to go on to the four main obelisk training methods. Now this is going to show you four different ways to train summoning and run and create your pouches since summoning consists of running from a bank to an obelisk and crafting pouches and repeating. Now the first method of pouch running is the low level and super simple method you'll be doing when you first start off training summoning and this will be running from the bank and taverly all the way to the obelisk and then repeating. This is super simple and it can be done from the moment that you start training summoning with no requirements. Next, we're going to be branching off of the Taverlene Run method, and you can actually do the same thing, but instead of banking, what you'll do is you'll sell your tertiary ingredient to the summoning shop. What you'll then do is you'll buy them back as you create pouches, so you never have to leave and go to a bank. This costs a bit more because you'll be paying a bit more for your tertiary ingredients, and you'll also need to make your pouches into scrolls when you're done, so so that they stack. This method definitely will cost you a bit of money just from the potential loss from making your pouches into scrolls and the GP loss buying up all your supplies back. However, it is extremely, extremely fast and you can turn your scrolls back in for shards 
at Bogrog in Gutenoth. He will actually give you 70% of the shards required to make the pouch back, meaning this can be a great way to get GP from scrolls that will not sell in the Grand Exchange or aren't used as much. You can also do the same for Lord Omlod in Prifendos. However, if you have the hard diaries from Prifendos, you can get an extra 10% more shards from Lord Omlod as well, making him the best place to swap your summoning scrolls for shards. The next method for training summoning is the Spirit Kayat method. This method requires level 57 summoning to use, and basically you summon a Spirit Kayat familiar, and you use it to teleport near the Piscatorius summoning obelisk. You'll then make your pouches, and then use something like a Ring of Dueling or a Fast Banking Teleport to bank and then repeat. This method makes around 2700 pouches per hour, making it really fast for training summoning traditionally. Now, the final method is training summoning at Amlod in Prifendos. This is a super fast method, and it basically consists of running from the bank to the obelisk. You can either run a short distance and bank, or you can use an attuned crystal teleport seed, and you can teleport back to the district to speed up this method even further. If you're using the crystal teleport seed, you can expect five to 6,000 pouches made per hour. Hour. And as a bonus, since you're in Prifendos, if you do this during Omelot Hour, you'll get 20% more base summoning XP from making all pouches and scrolls, and you'll create 12 scrolls per pouch instead of the regular 10. This is a really nice boost, and it makes it real worth it to do this during Omelot Hour. So now that you know the main methods of running pouches and creating pouches, we're going to get into what pouches to make from level 1 to 99 summoning. So from levels one to four, the optimal way that almost everyone does is doing the wolf whistle quest. This is a very short quest that introduces you to summoning and it will grant you XP to level four summoning. And it will also give you a starting amount of 275 gold charms, which is extremely important for the next step. After this, we'll be making Dreadfowl pouches from level 4 to 16 summoning, and we'll be using the gold charms that we received from the quest reward. It'll take us 250 pouches, and you'll lose around 345k. From level 16 to 33, you'll be making granite crab pouches with gold charms and iron ore as our tertiary ingredient. It will take you around 677 pouches to reach level 33, and you'll lose around 140k GP. Now, here is where we branch off to show every charm viable for each leveling section, so make sure to keep a lookout for the marker indicating the fastest method and the marker indicating the cheapest method. So, from level 33 to 41, you can make beavers using green charms, which will take you around 376 pouches, and it'll cost you around 167k. Or you can make honey badger pouches with crimson charms, which will take 154 pouches, and it'll cost you around 213k, making honey badgers the fastest method while making beavers slightly cheaper. So from levels 41 to 47, you can make bull ants with gold charms. It'll take you 607 pouches and you'll lose around 5.8 million GP. You can make macaw pouches with green charms. This will take you 443 pouches and it'll cost you 488k. And then finally, you can make honey badgers, which will take you 228 pouches and cost you 316k. Now honey badgers is the cheapest and the fastest option for this method. However, if you don't have a lot of Crimson Charms yet, McCall's will work pretty well too. I would not recommend Bull Ants at all or using Gold Charms here unless you have a ton of money to blow. From levels 47 to 49, you can make Bull Ants again with Gold Charms and it'll take you 297 pouches and you'll lose 2.8 mil. You can now make Magpies with Green Charms. It'll take you 189 pouches or cost you 346k. 
Or you can also now make Pyre Lords with Crimson Charms. It'll take you 78 pouches and cost you 95k. Now Pyre Lords are the cheapest and fastest method, but like I said before, if you don't have the Crimson Charms, Magpies are pretty good as well, while Bull Ants are really not worth making here at all. From level 49 to 52, you can make bull ants again with gold charms. It'll take you 571 pouches and cost you 5.5 mil. You can continue magpies with green charms, taking 363 pouches or costing 665k. Or you can start making bloated leeches with crimson charms taking 141 pouches and costing 170k. Now doing bloated leeches is your fastest and cheapest option, with magpies being pretty decent as well. Like I said, bullants are really not worth doing. Alright, so from levels 52 to 56, you can now start making spirit terror birds with gold charms. These are much better than bullants in terms of how much you lose. It'll take you 833 pouches and cost you around 118k. You can continue making magpies with your green charms, taking 685 pouches and costing 1.2 mil. Or you can do bloated leeches, taking 265 pouches and costing 322k. Now terror birds are much much more worth it than bullants like I said, and they come in as our cheapest method, while bloated leeches are our fastest method. All the pouches in this leveling range are pretty good for XP and not a huge loss. From level 56 to 61, you can continue making spirit terror birds with gold charms. It'll take you 1,632 pouches and cost you 231k. You can now make the ibis pouch with green charms, and it'll take you 1,100 pouches and cost you 800k. And you can continue with bloated leeches, taking 519 pouches or costing 631k. Terror birds will remain our cheapest option to make, while bloated leeches are almost three three times faster XP coming in at our fastest option. From levels 61 to 66, you can continue Terror Birds and you'll need to make around 2,676 pouches, costing 379k, and you can continue with the Ibis pouches as well, taking 1,853 pouches and costing you 1.3 mil. Now you can now make Smoke Devil pouches with Crimson Charms, taking 683 pouches or costing 183k. Smoke Devils is by far the best option and it's the cheapest and fastest method for this leveling range. And with the amount of charms that you need for these levels, we are now at the point in the level 60s where gold charms really aren't worth using if you care about your XP per hour. However, if you just want to use up all your charms, feel free to use gold charms and I will continue showing you gold charm methods all the way up to 99. Alright, so from level 66 to 69, you can make Barker Toad pouches with gold charms. It'll take you 1,864 pouches and cost you 2.5 million GP. You can continue making Ibis pouches with green charms, taking 1,600 pouches and costing 1.1 mil. You can do more Smoke Devils with Crimson Charms, taking 605 pouches and costing only 162k. And finally, now is around the point where you'll want to start using up your Blue Charms. And you can make Mithril Minotaurs, taking 280 pouches and costing 514k. Now Minotaurs are by far the fastest method, while Smoke Devils remain the cheapest. Next, we'll be looking at levels 69 to 74, and you continue with Barker Toads, taking 4,645 pouches, costing 6.3 mil GP, or for green charms, you can now make Fruit Bats, taking 3,300 pouches and costing 2.8 million GP. You can continue making Smoke Devils with your Crimson Charms, taking 1,508 pouches and costing around 400k, and of course, you can do more Mithril Minotaurs with Blue Charms, taking 650 pouches and costing 1.2 mil. Smoke Devils with Crimson Charms remains the cheapest method, while Minotaurs with Blue Charms remain the fastest method. Now from level 74 to 80, you can continue with Barker Toads taking 9,651 pouches and costing 13 mil. Fruit Bats will continue for your Green Charms taking 7,000 pouches and costing 5.8 mil. Now you can start making the Granite Lobster Pouch and you need to make 2,600 pouches with your Crimson Charms and it'll cost you around 4 mil. You will also continue with Mithril Minotaurs using your Blue Charms taking 1,400 pouches and costing 
around 2.6 million GP. Blue charms are the cheapest and the fastest method for these levels with myth or minotaurs, with crimsons being very good as well. We're now getting to the point in our leveling that using green charms is very slow XP per hour at these levels. So for me personally, I would be farming and using just crimsons and blue charms. However, like I said, I'll continue showing all the methods. Now from level 80 to 85, Barker Totes remain at 13,800 pouches and will cost you 18 mil. You can continue Fruit Bats with Green Charms taking 10,000 pouches and costing 8.3 mil. And now we'll continue doing our Granite Lobsters with Crimson, pouch, Crimson Charms taking 3,688 pouches and costing 5.6 mil. And now we can make Moss Titans with Blue Charms. It'll take us 1,727 pouches and it'll cost us 1.6 mil. Blue charms with moss titans are the fastest and the cheapest method while using crimson charms to make granite lobsters remain second best. I would recommend cutting out using green charms or gold charms completely at this point as the XP per hour is just not worth it for the levels we are at now. From level 85 to 89, Barker Toads remain again at 17k pouches, costing 23 million GP. Fruit Bats will continue taking 12,300 pouches and costing 10 million GP. Now we can make Swamp Titans with our Crimson Charms, however they are much more expensive and only a little bit more XP so I would recommend continuing with Granite Lobsters taking 4,590 pouches and costing you around 7 million GP. And once you hit level 86, you can then make Rune Minotaurs which take around 1,975 pouches and will cost you about 5.8 mil GP. Rune Minotaurs once you're level 86 are going to be the fastest fastest and the cheapest method, while granite lobsters are close behind. Alright, so level 89 to 95. Barker Toads remain for gold charms at 42k pouches, costing 57 million GP. You can now make unicorn stallion pouches with your green charms, and it'll take you 24k pouches and cost you around 80 mil. Spirit Dagonoth are now the best and worth making over granite lobsters, taking 10,000 pouches and costing you 15 mil, while geyser titans are made from blue charms, taking 4,700 pouches and costing around 22.4 million GP. Now Geyser Titans are the fastest method, while Spirit Dagonoths are the cheapest. And as you can see by the huge numbers now, there's really no reason to be using your Gold or Green Charms much at these levels. Now on the home stretch, from level 95 to 99. Now Barker Toads remain the best at Gold Charms, uh, taking 46,000 pouches and costing 63 mil. Unicorn Stallions remain with Green Charms, taking 26,000 pouches and costing 86 mil. You'll continue making the Spirit Dagonos, but once you hit level 96, you then want to make Pack Yak Pouches. It'll take you 95 pouches and it'll only cost you 9 mil. So pack Pack are really really good. And then of course Geyser Titans remain the best method with blue charms, taking 5100 pouches to get to level 99 and it'll cost you 24 million GP. Making Pack Yaks with Crimson Charms is now by far our cheapest method to get to 99 and pretty fast. While Geyser Titans take around half the charms but they'll cost you about double. Alright, so now we're going to look at level 99 to 120 summoning, which is a large, large amount of XP. Now using Crimson Charms, you'll basically want to stick to doing either Steel Titans or Pack Yaks. However, Steel Titans, you'll make around only 6k less pouches in the long run than Pack Yaks. However, it's going to cost you a ton more. So Steel Titans really aren't worth doing and you really would just want to do Pack Yaks. Now of course you can swap back for some shards instead of selling the pouches, but pack eggs are just a very good method only costing 153 million GP and taking around 200k pouches. Now for blue charms, rune minotaurs and geyser titans give around the same XP, but geyser titans cost a little bit more. Of course like I said with all these methods you can swap pouches to shards if the pouches don't sell on the GE and maybe you can get more value back that way. 
Keep in mind, all these calculations for this whole guide is in fact your aim, the shaman's outfit, incense sticks, double XP, bonus XP, or any of the boosts I talked about at the start. So you'll want to factor those in as well because obviously those are going to drastically decrease this, but I did this not counting any boosts at all. So the cheapest method to level 120 is pack yaks, while the fastest method to 120 is going to be doing geyser titans. All right, now so quickly, something I wanna do is recap the fastest method from one to 120 and the cheapest method from one to 120 real fast. So if you need to look back, you can look here if you want to follow a specific path. So the cheapest method is first. So from level one to four, you do Wolf's Whistle, four to 16 Dread Fowls, 16 to 33 Granite Crabs, 33 to 41 Beavers, 41 to 47 Honey Badgers, 47 to 49 Pyre Lords, 49 to 52 Bloated Leeches, 52 to 61 Terror Birds, 61 to 74 smoke devils 74 to 80 mithril minotaurs 80 to 85 moss titans 85 to 89 rune minotaurs 89 to 96 spirit dagonos and then 96 all the way to 99 or all the way to 120 you will do pack yaks so now looking at the fastest method to 120 is level 1 to 4 Wolf's Whistle, 4 to 16 Dreadfowls, 16 to 33 Granite Crabs, 33 to 47 Honey Badgers, 47 to 49 Pyre Lords, 49 to 61 Bloated Leeches, 61 to 66 Smoke Devils, 66 to 80 Mithril Minotaurs, 80 to 85 Moss Titans, 85 to 89 Rune Minotaurs, and then from level 89 all the way to 99 or to 120 you'll be doing Geyser or titans. All right, so finally at the end of the video here, I want to mention a few things. The first is the Familiarization Weekly D&D, &D, and it's basically a mini game that you can do every week, and you can earn pieces of the Shaman's outfit, but you can also choose a reward of triple charms, and you'll basically get a triple charm drop enhancer, and depending on the amount of shards you collected while you actually did the D&D, &D, the max you can get is 40 minutes. You will get triple charms for up to 40 minutes. This is a really amazing to take advantage of to get a ton of charms and if you do methods that really allow you to get charms super fast this can really rack up the charms for your training now finally i wanted to mention ancient summoning and while it's not a good method at all to gain xp in summoning but since it was released with the dag and buy mystery from archaeology it allows you to use new ancient summoning familiars which are all really good for a variety of things like pvm and also skilling and while it won't help you under way to 99 summoning since this is a summoning guide in general i thought i'd mention ancient summoning just for the clarity all right so that's gonna do it for my 1 to 99 or 120 summoning guide i hope you guys enjoyed it like i said i put basically every method you could do on there i wanted to include things because i know there's people that really just want to use up their charms and aren't looking for efficiency i know there's people that's looking for you know a cheap way to train i know there's people looking for a fast way to train so i thought the kind of fast and cheap options while showing all charms was a really good thing to do and i put a lot of time and effort into this guide um a ton of hours so if you guys wouldn't mind giving it a like that would be amazing and subscribing for more runescape 3 guides or just runescape 3 content in general but yeah thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video